Really pleased to be joined uh, by Ryan O'Reilly of the St. Louis Blues. Ryan, it is great to see you. First of all, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. This is a serious time. You're not playing the game. There's obviously a, a lot of concern worldwide about what's going on. So I should ask you, how are you doing? How are you and the family holding up in St. Louis? Uh, we're doing good. Um, obviously, it is a scary time, and you know we're trying to be as safe as possible. But uh, you know we have a nice piece of property here. We're able to get outside and kind of stay distant from everyone. And yeah, we're just waiting this out. Um, you know, hopefully things, you know, you know, the curve kind of gets leveled, and you know things uh, can start coming back. But uh, it's definitely a scary time. But we're hanging in there. What are you doing day to day? If you don't mind me asking, are you are you FaceTiming family and friends? Are you? Getting a home workout in? Is it a bit of everything? I know you got a little two year old running around at home and one on the way, but what what's every day like around the house for you? Yeah, it's uh you know, it's fun. It's uh it's nice to get some real good time with my little guy. Um, you know, he's just uh, a ball of energy right now. So it's it, it's quite exciting. You know, the uh you know, we're doing everything. He's we're in the driveway shooting pucks and then, you know, we're downstairs and we're playing music together or, well not that good but uh you know he's hammering on the drum or something like that but uh you know we're yeah you know we're having fun uh um, yeah got a couple little little bikes behind me and some weights so try to try to get some workouts in and kind of stay uh you know stay in shape and uh yeah it's uh it's definitely kind of making the best of it i see you even got the guitar there behind you well maybe uh, get you to pick on that axe in a little bit here but uh <laughs> yeah. this is a weird reality for everybody uh and we'll try to keep this light and positive and fun, but I mean, you guys are having another heck of a season prior to the pause. What have you noticed about this team? As you look back to the Stanley Cup team from a year ago, and it's a much different scenario for your group this time around. What have you noticed about the way your team was playing? And what'd you like about it? Um, you know, I thought, uh, you know, compared to last year, obviously we got off to a much better start. We kind of, we've kind of had an identity right from the get go. And I think we do a good job, but, you know, as a group, we know when we're not playing to that or we know when we get away from it and, and we're able to adjust and get back. And by no means is a bit of perfect season, but we've, you know, we've been managed, we managed really well in the sense that, you know, a couple of bad games we've responded and then throw three or four together and, and find their way back on track that way. So it's, you know, just as a group, it, there's so many good guys that, you know, know how tough it is to win and, and know, at the right times when to bear down and and again still we got a lot left and you know hopefully it comes back soon and you know everything else is, is fine but um yeah it's just you know we have a good group of guys that you know are very disciplined and, and know how to do the right things at the right times how about for you personally I, I look at your career i think it's such a fascinating story i think it's fairly well documented just about the early portion of your career you know, you, you go from Colorado, you transition into Buffalo, and then there were some times where, you know, you admittedly sort of were losing your love for the game, and then you found it again. And I know your dad, Brian, was just so instrumental in that for you. Tell me about just the way that all clicked, and then the trade to St. Louis, and just what changed for you, your mindset, and, and coming to a new organization, and how everything just shifted for you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty incredible how everything unfolded. Um, you know, it is obviously we're so lucky that you know i'm able to have a job where i'm playing doing what i love and and playing the sport but you know since i've been little you know i wanted to win and when i don't win it's it's frustrating it's it also pushes me but um yeah it's not fun you know the, the best times is when you're you know you're with a good group of guys and you're winning hockey and you know that's it's the most exciting thing to do and, and a buffalo obviously didn't really you know we never really had a chance to do that and it's draining and me being one of the guys that you know played as a forward played the most minutes and it, a lot of it was my responsibility and and you know i had still and you know, i still have a lot of learning to do but at the time i really felt um you know there's opportunities there to to grow and you know i tried and maybe took a little longer for certain things but uh yeah it was weird uh you know obviously at the end of the last season before i trade it kind of just you know was honest and said yeah kind of you know losing is not fun losing stinks and and, and when you're constantly doing it, come to the rink isn't, uh, yeah, you don't love it. And it's tough. And uh, that was just at certain times, you know, I still, every time you touch the ice and you're playing and, you know, you, you, give it, you, know, you just leave it out there and you come off, you don't win. It's like, oh gosh, like it's just, it's, it can be frustrating. But um, yeah, it's just, it's weird how everything unfolded there. Um, you know, I, I was over at the world championships and got a call from my agent and 
kind of heard him kind of being shopped around and I was just kind of, it was just weird. I, you know, I didn't really expect it. I thought I was going to, you know, finish my career in Buffalo and be there forever. But, uh, you know, right when, um, yeah, I got traded to St. Louis, you know, I, I played with a bunch of those guys in international and it's obviously against them, you know, many times in Colorado and you kind of, you know, it was just an organization, a team that had such an identity already where it was just such a, you know, everyone knew that you, you put on that jersey, you got to play hard. And, and for myself, it was just, it was very exciting. You know, I thought I'm going to a team that's very close. It's been close for many years, you know, and you got to give a credit to the guys that have been here, you know, you know, Steen, um, Petro, Tarasenko, uh, Bollmeister, these guys that have been around for years, built this culture and players past that was just, you know, a winning culture. And obviously they never got it done because it, again, <laughs> A lot of things and bounce stuff to go your way, but you know they they knew it a win, and for me to be able to come in and be a part of that, it was just it was so exciting. And and then again, the start of the year last year was not good, and <laughs> we uh, yeah I didn't feel feel too good about that. But again, we had the pieces, and it just it took it took a little while to to gel. But from what guys built there, it eventually blossomed into to what it was, and we did something very special. I remember you and I having a chat. I think it was right around when you first arrived in St. Louis, and we were sitting in your stall just talking about the idea that never that even keel was so essential for you in that short term memory. You would forget about a good shift. You would forget about a bad shift. And it was being so present that really stood out for me. And I, I can't imagine how that was tested, as you referenced, uh, the, the way last year was going, the way it was trending. Your story was just all about, oh, my gosh, I can't be going through this again. And then somehow you add to the group and the group adds to you and it all worked in the end. And it was so great to see you um, in Vegas with the hardware. You and Jordan, uh, you brought the Stanley Cup. You, of course, had the Con Smythe, and you were a Selkie winner, and you won the Lady Bing earlier on in your career. Do you ever just kind of stop and think just about your journey and, you know, that hardship that so many players have to go through to get to the, the pinnacle where you've been? Yeah, it definitely uh, it wasn't easy. And, and I still sometimes pinch myself at, you know, kind of, what happened in like last year winning the cup and, and all that like I I still can't believe it it's crazy how you know <laughs> it, it just it did happen but um you know again and I try you know just like I play is you know I try to be as present as possible you know there's still a lot more I want to do with my career and and you know especially look at this year and the team that we have you know we you know hopefully we'll have another opportunity to, to compete for the cup and and yeah it's you know, again, if you win it, you think that, oh gosh, it's, it's made, but you know, we wanted to win again. And I, you know, want to do a lot more and be a part of another team that can do it. So it's, you know, you, it, it is pretty special and it's amazing to share with people, but uh, yeah, again, I, I feel like a lot more. <laughs> is it tough walking around St. Louis? Is it like uh, you guys are the Beatles there? I mean, you guys are, that's a proud <laughs> hockey town. And for you guys to do what you did, I mean, is it, you can't go anywhere. I would imagine these days. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, this season has been obviously very different for every place you go, getting recognized, you know, all of us, no matter where we're going to the grocery store or some place, uh, people stop, but people are so genuine and, and it's amazing. Like, you know, people come to myself and be like, oh God, I've been a season ticket holder for 50 years or my dad, he was a season ticket holder and used to bring me to all the games and um, thank you so much. And I'm just like... <laughs> It's, you know, it's, it's crazy just how much it, it does mean to people, how much they support. And, you know, I was only here for one year and people are thanking me. And it's just funny, like you think about all the great teams and players that they had that have, you know, been a part of it and helped, you know, create what this hockey town is now that uh, it's a pretty special thing. And it's, uh, it's definitely crazy, definitely to be a part of it. I'm just looking at your beard. How am I doing here? It's a little embarrassing. What you, what, how would you? Assess this. I don't know. You might need to tighten that up. I don't know if I like it, but it's uh, <laughs> no, it's, it needs a touch of gray. It's coming. It's coming. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. Though you grow where you can, all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, as as you look at uh, your own career, and we talked about some of the accomplishments, but I also you still got that that uh, curved little uh, tip on the end of your stick. Is that still a thing? Where to help you? With I think you're the league leader in as many face-off attempts. Uh, have you still got the hook on the uh, on the end of the stick? Yeah, I still use it. I'm kind of, I, I got into it my first year. I remember uh, I kind of switched over to Warrior and kind of had the idea because I, I used a very long blade and it was like, I think uh, it was a Ronick pattern and 
I remember it was kind of, it's fairly straight, but it was fairly long. And I just thought, well, you know, why not if I get it, kind of curve the tip it up in, to, uh, sorry, curve the tip in a bit, you know, give me a little bit more control. And so, you know, where you're sensing this blade, you kind of heat it up when you're curling. That's my dog in the back there. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's Bruce. Bruce, say hi. Uh, but uh, yeah, so curve the tip. And then it just gives me a lot more control. I find I don't have to roll my wrist as hard when I want to pull the puck in and, and one handed stuff. I kind of get in this area and just pull it right to I want, right to where I want. So um, again, I do everything off kind of the heel to middle part of my blade. So it, it doesn't really affect my shooting or passing. So it's just kind of something that helps funnel it back to that area and I think gives me a bit more control. Ryan, you've played with so many players internationally, of course, with and against everybody in the National Hockey League. I wonder who for you stands out as a player that really blows you away and maybe somebody under the radar or somebody you know real close about their intricacies who stands out um oh gosh uh you know it's pretty tough um you know one guy that uh i always kind of looked up to and loved uh the way he played um was was zetterberg um you know i just always admired his game positionally how detailed he was and how he always just you know, every, I felt like every shift he, he made something happen. And when I played against him and, or even when I was growing up, when I was in Detroit, just watching him, uh, him and Datsuk too were guys that I always, like, loved the way Datsuk would strip pucks and his hand eye and little things he'd do with that. So always love watching those guys. But uh, yeah, when I got to play against, you know, Detroit when I was younger and, and those guys still there. And, um, yeah, he definitely, he's definitely a sponge in those games, watching those guys, the details that they put into it. Um, and internationally too, I've had, I've been very fortunate to play with yeah some of the best players in the game. Um, obviously, uh, McDavid was something that when I got to see him kind of every practice, um, you know, every game there, just how not only is he relentless, but just be able to go that top speed and still have full control of the puck and put it wherever he wants. Um, be so strong on a stick. Uh, he was it just blew me away. He just he, I know everyone else sees it too, but for myself to see it every practice, you, you, you see why he is the player he is. And there's another thing too. What um, another guy too that obviously um, Crosby is one guy that uh, I was so impressed by the back end that he has. How his back end, you know, he is it's harder than most guys' forehands. And he was a guy that I was really impressed with uh, his radius, in the sense that you know you put a puck anywhere in someone's radius and for able to handle it and get full control. He was, I think, probably one of the best I've ever seen at that, whether it's in his skates, in the air, you know, he always was strong in his like core positionally where he wouldn't get knocked off by. Wherever it came around him, it was just so fluently. He picked it up and then was under control. It was something that was really cool that, uh, again, I got to see him practice and got to see in the games, watching every little shift. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, obviously those guys are, <laughs> Uh, too underrated, but uh, you know, little details that that obviously I love uh, about those players. How uh, this is a tough question too to to answer, but how do you stop those two? When you look at the differences of their games, uh, you could look at Crosby and and look at his resume, and the simple answer is maybe you don't. And then you watch a guy like Connor McDavid on a nightly basis, and you see how fast and how explosive he is. And you mentioned that the the puck handling, the stick handling, maybe you don't stop them. But is there any way that you can kind of approach it as the group? It, that kind of contains them? Um, yeah, well, usually with like the top guys and like the elite of the elite, and if I get that matchup against them, you know, I've, I, for myself, it's being as tight as possible, you know, always like just trying to exhaust them as much as you can, never giving them an, an easy shift or, uh, you know, giving them space, you know, not, not illegally clutch and grabbing or dirty shots, but just always kind of stepping in their way and, and making, you know, making it as long as a night possible for those guys. And McDavid's a guy that obviously, you know, you see him wind up in his own end. And, it, you know, if you don't get on him or in front of him there, he's going to have so much speed. He's going to expose the D. So it's like when you see that puck kind of transfers against, uh, you know, if you're if I'm in the offensive zone and that puck transfers to them, you know, I'm always kind of looking, okay, where is he? Because, you know, he's, he's winding up and he's looking for that puck and he's going to go. So it's there's a certain awareness to that. and And then, for a guy like Sid too, you know, he's just all aspects of the ace. He's finding a way to kind of get lost and get on the right side of guys. But he's a guy you got to like, he's just always, when you're going at him, he's always making these quick little touches that you kind of have to have your stick in a good spot, take away the dangerous play first. And 
and hopefully he doesn't make that and then you could kind of force him out into like a weaker area but it's again this isn't something like you're really kind of you, you kind of think about it a bit before but then kind of the instincts of the game kind of take over and it's like okay david i'm getting in front of him i'm trying to slow him down crosby it's i gotta be i gotta be sharp i gotta have my stick in the right spot or he's gonna he's coming through me or he's gonna spin me if i'm kind of reaching off the thing so there's, there's little details that actually come out but uh yeah, it's definitely a fun challenge, tough challenge for sure. No doubt. You are a pretty even keeled guy. Uh, you keep it uh, pretty close to the vest in terms of uh, on the ice. Do you ever lose com- lose composure at all? I know you get upset, you get fiery, you're, you're a competitor. <laughs> you ever talk trash? You ever you ever absolutely lose it? Oh, I, I wish I could, but I'm just like, I'm not tough. Like, I can't back it up. Like, <laughs> I would just get the wheels beat off me if I uh, started chirping and, and such. So I... Uh, you know, there is times I, you know, I get a little, yeah, a little emotional, but uh, I know I kind of get, uh, I, I like, I like that emotion where I kind of do kind of snap a bit on the bench, not, not at anyone else, but just, you know, coaches laugh. Sometimes I, I kick the boards pretty hard, but uh, I don't know. It kind of just kind of helps. I don't know. Sometimes you kind of need to elevate and kind of play with more of an edge. And I think that kind of gets me a little bit more aggressive where, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not very aggressive all the time. So it's something that helps, but <laughs> That's great. Um, well, that's the hockey talk. We can go on for hours. I, uh, but I also know that music is a real passion for you as well. Oh, and if, if you wouldn't mind, maybe we could get you to grab that guitar <laughs> behind you. If I can put All you right. on the spot. Yeah, if you don't mind. I'll, and, mess around. I'll show you a couple. Yeah, of grab that thing. And um, I'll show you this one, too. This is... Uh, yeah, we'll do that. And what are you listening to these days? <laughs> Uh, a little bit of everything, but uh, I'll go with these first. But uh, this is the guitar I, I got after kind of won the cup. I was getting one fixed and got this beautiful um, Gibson vintage uh, 1957 hollow body that has just really been cool. Kind of the first electric I bought. It's a nice, uh, gorgeous treat. And then this is kind of my baby. This is a Martin, kind of very thick breaded. Really nice. That first one was a present to yourself? Yes. Yeah, that was kind of. I was getting a guitar fix. I walked and I saw it, and I was like, "No, I know I was going to kind of get it." And it was kind of, I don't know. Those are I, you, were, you earned it, it, I think. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it was a nice treat for sure. So, how long have you been playing? Um, I started kind of in grade twelve. Um, had a little guitar and started. That's when the kind of right when YouTube started coming out, okay. and they were finding kind of lessons on there. And I found it was kind of, you know. I was able to kind of look up and learn like little basic stuff. And it kind of started from there. And then um, once I made Colorado and finally got a real check, um, I went and bought a nice uh, Gibson that uh, I think he's back home in Toronto. But um, yeah, it was kind of, and I kind of got addicted to it. And yeah, I've been loving it, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more challenging now to get time to play with my little guy, but uh, it's, uh, no, it's still a fun hobby. I love it. I usually travel with one and, just kind of mess around. I'm not anything special, but uh, you know, it's fun for me for sure. Can you hear the song Gloria anymore, or does it? Can, I've heard it so many times, I can't hear it anymore. Or does it still bring back the memories? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know kind of pretty sick of it, but yeah. uh, it does. You know, I do hear it. Obviously, it brings back the memories out, which is yeah. really cool. But uh, yeah, for a while there, like after we won every place we walked into even like back home and such you know every place you walked in people had it go on and crank and it's like oh okay yeah, that one again well, why don't like you little... uh, why don't you play something if you don't mind i don't know if you sing but whatever you've got oh, we'll take I do. it gosh i hope this is <sighs> i don't know yeah hey, look at you eh? <laughs> um this is what i'm kind of working on but uh this is uh obviously one of my favorite ones to play but uh it's a song by the Tragically Hip. Oh, beauty. Uh, hey, Bob Cage. Well, I'll play a little bit of it, but... Um... And I left your house this morning
Hey, that this that is fan, right? that is fantastic. Listen, I hope um, it sounds all right with the Bluetooth. It, I don't know. Mm, <laughs> it's it sounded great environment anyway. So my vocals probably weren't great there. But. I fantastic stuff, and yeah. uh, and I look forward to maybe hearing it in person someday, and maybe at one of those Irish pubs in St. Louis when we come to town. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. We thank you so much for joining us. We won't uh, take up any more of your time. We'll let you get back to the family. But uh, Ryan, continued success. Thanks for doing this, and uh, you're a talent on and off the ice. Thanks for doing it. No, oh, thanks a lot. It's always a pleasure, and be safe. You know, everyone out there, yeah. be safe, and hopefully this is over soon, and yeah, flatten the curve, and we can be back playing hockey soon.